Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So now let's get started with a pre-reading method for reading college textbooks. Again, uh, I have my own style of teaching this information and also using this information. Uh, some of you guys may know from the previous video that I started out as a developmental reading professor. Now I, I teach English uh, at a community college and I really enjoy it a great deal. Uh, but one of the things that I, I still get a chance to do for students who uh, don't attend the school where I am, but uh, students in, in different areas of life, like student athletes at universities or uh, high school students that are getting ready to go to college, I do academic coaching uh, and all of that for them. So it's personal coaching and academic coaching, but one of the key things that we do is we definitely make sure that they are ready for college uh, and work with a few organizations to do that. And so in that, uh, I've had an opportunity to, to, to test some of the reading strategies that are out there that I've been you know, working with for 20 years. Uh, and I've had a chance to look at those same reading strategies and then say, what can we do a little bit differently to make this a little bit more effective so that uh, students are able to just take hold of it and, uh, and execute it with a certain level of authority. So uh, the first method that I'd like to introduce you to uh, is my real pre-reading method my real pre-reading method. One of the things that you have to do when you first engage a new text is you have to commit to it. You have to make sure that you're in a real relationship with this text, right? So here's a quick story. So I'm also uh, someone who went to graduate school uh, later in life. So I did my master's right out of uh, undergraduate school, but I waited like years and years and years and kids later to do my doctorate work. And one of the things that happened through that process is that I had to take some classes I really wasn't all that interested in. And one of the classes I had to take required me to study human evolution uh, as it relates to spirituality. And it was a major challenge for me because my background was so very religious. So I didn't want to read the information. And I found that I had a tough time just engaging and just, you know, getting in there and saying, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this for a long period of time because I need to know this information. So what I want to teach you today is not just something uh, that I told my students to do over the years, not, not just the folks who I've done academic coaching for, the organizations I've worked with. This is something that I actually use in my own study today, all right? So I'm going to teach you uh, the real method for pre-reading. And the first thing I want to get to is what the R stands for. And the R is just a basic word, read. You're going to have to do some pre-reading in order to get going with the active reading. And so to do that, one of the techniques is to look at uh, the, the chapter uh, review and the chapter preview. Look at what happens at the beginning of the chapter and look at what the textbook author gives you at the end of the chapter. So let me give you like an example. All right, so the first thing, the first thing we're going to do is think about the chapter preview. So when you get a textbook, it looks a little bit something like this when you get to, to the first page, right? So you have to know the preface and the table of contents and all that. But you may see something that looks like this, right? Uh, Civilization's gonna give you a big picture. It's gonna, you know, show you, uh, you know, what this section is about. In this case, it's gonna be the first civilizations, etc. So what I'm going to have to do as a textbook reader is I'm going to have to figure out what do they mean whenever they say origins of the first civilization. So I'm going to have to ask the question of it. So I would grab a pen and I would say to myself, hmm, what are the origins or first civilizations? So I have to look at it and immediately ask a question of it just so it can start making sense to me. What I'd want to do then, I'd want to go through and see, now what do they have to say about the origins of civilization? You know, why are they showing me a picture of the Sphinx, right? And I'd want to just do this, this questioning or this thinking process, uh, even as I'm just looking at the pictures and looking at the beginning of the book and getting a sense of what this chapter is going to be about. In this section, it says a first look is going to give me some background details on what this particular chapter is going to be about. All right. So the next thing I would need to do 
is look at the end of the chapter, right? The end of the chapter is going to tell me a lot about what I need to pay attention to, right? So it's gonna maybe give me a timeline. This is a humanities textbook. So uh, timelines and, and the way that things grow and form and shape over time, that's important, right? So I can look at the timeline or I can look at uh, uh, all of the grids and things that they offer in order to get a sense of what's in this chapter. So I'll, I, I then will see that there are gonna be historical events from Mesopotamia, There'll be historical events in Africa, historical events in Asia and the Americas. Uh, there'll be visual art that I'll need to, uh, visual art images that I'll need to pay attention to. There'll be literary landmarks. So I know that these are the things that I can expect in this chapter, right? So I already have a sense of what I need to know uh, in preparation for any exam or quiz or whatever that I may run into. Another thing that you can look for in this method is uh, key topics, right? So these are gonna be all of the subheadings that they offer in the textbook, right? So with these key topics in this section also called afterward, <laughs> you're gonna be able to see uh, some of the ideas that are in the chapter, right? So the Persian empire, iron technology, landmarks of the iron age, all of these things. So just by getting a sense of what's in the chapter preview, by reading this section called the first look and the information that's in the chapter review where I have these timelines and these keywords, uh, I get a sense of exactly what I can expect to see in this textbook, right? So that's one way uh, in order to do some pre-reading. Just look at the very beginning and the very end. Now, not all textbooks are set up that way, right? So in certain classes, you're just gonna have a general book and your book may look like this. Like this was my book for that class I was telling you about. Um, uh, human uh, evolution and religion, right? So this is a class that I had to take. So this book doesn't give me a timeline or pretty pictures and all that. It gives me stuff like this, right? So it was my job then to try to figure out how am I going to retain the information in this chapter? I have no chapter preview no chapter review, they've not given me any pretty illustrations, nothing for me to go on. I just have words on a page, all right? And this happens to you also in undergraduate school, so still stay tuned. Uh, a lot of your English composition books are set up this way. Uh, a lot of your literary texts are set up this way. Um, and humanities-based text, communication texts, uh, they have a tendency, historical documents, to be set up this way. So you kind of need a system still uh, in order to get through the information. So what you do is that you're still gonna take a look at the title and you're going to read the very first paragraph of, of this text, right? Uh, the very first paragraph is gonna give you some idea of what this particular chapter is gonna be about, right? The other thing you wanna do is that you want to look for keywords in the text itself, right? So you're gonna get something called your subject or your topic here. What you wanna do, you wanna go through the text and you wanna circle each time you see uh, these two words, religion and reality. So that's what I did. I went in and I circled religion here. It gave me a definition of it there. And then I circled reality, 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 all these different realities down here. And by the time I got to the end of it, I read this paragraph to try to get a sense of what are they saying about reality and how does that relate to religion? And it's weird because that's the question I ask myself at the top of this page, and that's the technique we're gonna go over in a little bit to see exactly how these two terms correlate. And so by the time I get to the end, I've come up with uh, an analysis, if you will, or an understanding of how these two terms work together. And I'm able to think about reality down here, the definition of religion, up here and then I'm able to come up with what I think this chapter or this section is trying to communicate to me by finding the main idea of it just by going through this process of looking for the topic and circling it and then looking at those terms so that I can understand exactly what those terms are trying to say to me. All right, so if you don't have a chapter preview in your textbook, you can use this strategy of looking for the topic, uh, encircling it, and reading the introduction uh, information in the paragraph or introduction paragraph, or maybe sometimes it's gonna be two paragraphs. But that first page will give you some, some idea of what to expect. Now, also in a book like this, uh, you're not gonna get a chapter 
review. Instead, you're going to get the last paragraph. <laughs> and so you can still go to the very end of the chapter in the very last paragraph and just read it and just see what it says. So in a lot of textbooks, they're just going to kind of wrap up what they've said before, like in a conclusion, like you should do in essays and things like that. So uh, textbooks are really not that much different. In this case, um, this chapter uh, it says, or this chapter ends with the statement that says, in this chapter, we've considered the building blocks out of which come ritual, myth, and theology, and the traditions of reflective thought on the non-Christian uh, religions, uh, cultural forms around which religions develop, uh, et cetera. Um, and so, and it says it'll take on new meaning in the next uh, chapter. So it gives me a recap of what was in this chapter. And then it also gives me a cliffhanger, a little setup for the next chapter. So as a student, what I'm going to need to do so that I, before I even read all of this drama and all this mess in between, I need to be able to say, hmm, Candace, what I just realized is that they are going to talk about in this chapter that I'm going to read, that I still have not read cover to cover yet, I need to pay attention to ritual. I need to pay attention to myth. I need to pay attention to theology. So as they're talking about these, these ideas in this chapter, in anticipation of the next chapter, these are things I need to clue in on and pay attention to. So I want to do that. I need to pay attention to the uh, cultural forms that developed religion. So as I'm reading this chapter, I need to pay attention to that. So I haven't read anything except for this little tiny paragraph back here and two paragraphs up here, and I already have a decent idea about this chapter. It's about religion and reality, and maybe the bridge between those two things. And in some way, religion and reality are going to coincide with how people uh, do rituals, how people believe myths, and how people consider theology, and how culture forms around these ideas that impact religion. I haven't read anything yet, but I know all of this information. So doing uh, a, a real good look, uh, a pre-reading of the chapter introduction and the chapter conclusion uh, will give you a nice framework and foundation for what you can expect in a chapter. And guess what? You already know all of that and we haven't even read it yet. All right, so there's one technique. Again, you want to do real pre reading and you want to definitely do a little bit of pre reading before you get started. All right, I'll see you on the next video.